And the story, Rob, is that Caleb Williams, the presumed number one pick, the defending Heisman Trophy winner, the quarterback out of USC, who is fantastic. The story is that he wants whatever team drafted him or drafts him to give him partial ownership of the team. Now, Aaron Rodgers, uh, according to a source for PFT, Rob, Pro Football Talk, he attempted the same thing when he went to the Jets uh, this summer. He was, you know, wanted to get some ownership, and the owner shut that down. Now, it's not clear from the reports out there if this is against the collective bargaining agreement. I would think it is. I don't know how you could you be remember, an owner and a player. Right. I, I just Rob I, G I, has some some because I I remember when Michael Jordan was the owner had ownership in the Washington Wizards and then wanted to come back and play and he had to give up that ownership. Ma- they made Magic right? that do partial. that. Magic had to sell his shit. Didn't he have to sell his Chris to come back? Well, I got the answer oh, yeah. for you guys. A- according ahead, to an article in Forbes, this was published back in 2017, actually. There is no rule that outright states an NFL player cannot own a the team or part of the team. However, due to salary cap restrictions, it is extremely unlikely because the owners would allow it. Well, yeah, how – I mean, you couldn't – That. thank you for that, Rob G. I'm surprised there's no rule. They probably have just thought it was so – out of bounds that there's no way it would even come up. And also, Rob, the thing that makes it really hard to do is, I mean, there are other issues, human issues, but just from a financial standpoint, you got a salary cap. There's like, you can't, that would, I mean, that would, you talk about like uh, going over the cap. If a guy has ownership of the team, how do you even calculate that? Exactly. It, it wouldn't work, Chris. You're 100% right. Uh, let, let me tell you something. Caleb Williams is an unbelievable talent. I, I think he'll be the first pick. God, you know, God forbid something happens. But other than if he just plays and does what he has done, Chris, he'll be the first pick. And you can shoot for pie in the sky, ask for whatever you want. It's negotiations. I, I, I just don't see it. But the stories that keep coming out are the ones that I just start to scratch my head. Like, well, I'm not not going to go in the draft. I'm going to go to wherever I want to go. I'm not going to – I want ownership in this. And next will be like uh, Lincoln Riley has to be the coach and that's the only way I'm going to go to that. Like, Like for all the talent, Chris, when I start to hear all that, I don't know if I'm an owner, if I want to get involved in a guy who's that much into everything. Like not nah, look, that that's an understandable statement. That, that's that's it. Like like you could add whatever you want, but I'm talking about me personally as an owner. I, I want you to play. I'm the owner. You know what I mean? We have a GM, just like players yeah. trying to dictate everything. I can't. I can't you can't operate like that. And all of these stories, whether they I'm assuming they're true, Chris. But they would bother me a little bit that this is going to be more than just drafting a franchise quarterback, developing him, and trying to win a Super Bowl. That there will be – because if you allow any of this prior to him getting there, you have opened up such a can of worms. There's no turning back. There's just no turning back. Well, let me say a few things. I think that's well said. I agree with pretty much everything you said, Rob. Um A few things. Number one, and Caleb Williams is great. Uh, I I would take him number one. But for what it's worth, Rob, the midseason All-American team, now this is ESPN, so it's just, you know, their opinion. But they picked the midseason All-America team today. Caleb Williams was not only not the quarterback, he wasn't the second quarterback. Well, the starter was Michael Penix Jr. of Washington. Who who's is having a great season. Having a great year. Yeah, I'm not going to say he's better than Caleb, but he's having a great year. And Jaden Daniels from LSU was the second quarterback. Well, he's come, also, this is right ahead, whenever they did the selection, Chris, was right ahead, the, the, the terrible game, his worst college Probably game against Notre Dame. Probably coming off is my right? guess. Right, yeah. 
coming yeah, off like, that it must game. have been he had three like, interceptions in the first half. Time. He hasn't been great the last two weeks or last two games. You know, he he had only one touchdown. He wasn't as bad, but he had only one touchdown um, in the previous game, and no picks. But like you said, he had three against Notre Dame. Um, and Arizona, you know, he had the one touchdown, but only 219 yards passing. Um, and then, so that's one thing, Rob. And we've said it. As much as you like him, as good as he looks, there's no sure thing at quarterback in the NFL. It just isn't. We've seen too many guys that people thought was a sure thing that were drafted first or drafted second or drafted third that never, ever panned out. So we we don't know what we're going to get from him. But beyond you're, you're right. Like The bottom line is Caleb Williams needs to just be focused on being the best quarterback he can in the NFL, Rob, because the jump from college to NFL is obviously – a huge one for a quarterback, obviously. And so you just need to be focused on that. And as an owner, right, let, let's just play with it. Wait, so you get to choose the coach? So you get to choose the coaching staff? So you get to choose the Jeep? Really? You get to do the roster? I mean, that doesn't even make sense. That makes no sense. We've, we've talked about this before when they were talking about players being involved in, and, and about drafting players, Chris. And I was like, you scouted them, right? Like, like you, right. you really scouted them, and you know what, dude? I don't care if you watch their highlights on ESPN. Have you scouted these people right. that you're talking about? Right. You want them to draft and all this it's stuff. Impossible. I'm sorry, it's not possible. People it, it, do it, it for it, a living. It, That's right. what they do for a living, Chris. Not, not as a hobby. It's their livelihoods. In football, it would be impossible. Basketball, I guess, because you got only 12 to 15 players, might be possible. Might. But football, it literally would be impossible for a player to know enough about everybody else in the draft to lead the draft. Now, you you hire people to do but the bottom line is no player should have that much power. And to be honest, Rob, it puts the player in a bad position. How in the world are you going to – like, be in that locker room and you're going to be in charge of cutting guys? You're going to be in – like, it just – there's no way it could work. You have a bad I mean, day with if, the coach, if, if Chris. If we're fantasizing, it, it could only be – like, you would have to be – like, you'd have to be beyond the greatest player ever, Rob. You would have to be like Superman darn near. Because if you're not – if you're human and you have bad games here and there like everybody else, even no matter how good they are, you can't, you you know what I mean? They can't be the owner and have guys look at you the right way. And, and then here's the other thing, okay? You're the coach and one of the players, Chris, you're yelling at him or whatever. <laughs> He's a part owner. Dude, don't, I, I'm, what are you talking about? I own this team. I, I own a percentage of this team. Don't talk to me like that. What? I'll fire you. I'll go up to the other guys and get you fired. You know, right? How, what kind of authority would a head coach have with a guy like that has that trump card right. in his back pocket? It's just those are the bad things that would not Team make it feasible. Team morale would be terrible, Rob. Team morale would be terrible. Or there'd be guys coming up to you, yo, man. You know, I want that. I want that. I guess not max deal. That's the NBA. But you know, you know, I want that big contract next year, my man. You know, what if you boys with him? How are you going to have great friends on the team? You know what I mean? Like, I mean, it just. Uh, or you have a, or you have an issue that you don't out. get. Say he doesn't get the deal, Chris, that he wants. Right. He like, yo, I thought you were my boy. What? what right. What? You can't now, talk to now those players dudes. players are mad at you. They're not right. mad at the front office. They're mad at you. Like, it's just impossible. As we flesh it out, you see how much nonsense it is. And, and Rob, look, I don't know if this is Caleb. Um, this could be his dad, Carl. He did speak to GQ, and that's the article in which he said, you know, that they might, if they don't like the situation coming out of college with the NIL, they can easily stay, you know, and make millions and wait till the next year. And I don't know his dad from Adam. I knew LeVar Ball, or know him. I haven't talked to him in a while, but, you know, when he was really hot and right. – and, you know, all out there. And that was LeVar. Now, his sons, 
It seems like they had a really good relationship where I was around all of them together. So I, don't, I, I, I hope their relationship is still great. And he obviously has gone into the background now, which is good. But, Rob, that was him. You, I, you may have met the guys, Lonzo, LaMelo. Uh, they were good kids. And it was their dad doing all the sneaker brand and all the talking, oh, he's better than Steph. Oh, he could beat, who did he say he could beat one-on-one? You know, jo- Jordan. Jordan. Steph, like, just crazy stuff. Yeah. That was the dad. So I, I, I don't, I'm not going to put this necessarily on Caleb. This might, Rob, just be his dad feeling like, hey, we got a meal ticket. Let's capitalize on every, every single way we can. And there's nothing wrong with wanting to explore all these things, but I just think you keep piling these things up and you're an owner, Chris, and and you just gotta you gotta start to think, is this going to be a headache for me? And that, and that's just every first overall pick does not pan out. It's just as much as you wanna say, Oh yeah, you know, like, oh yeah, can't miss, this and that. He's going to be a generational talent. A lot of them don't pan out. So so it sounds like you, you think you're king of the world and everything's good. I mean, it didn't happen, Chris, but Matt Liner didn't come out of USC. He stayed, went from the first overall pick to, what, number 10, and didn't have an NFL career to talk about. Right. That guy was supposed to be the number one pick. And he went back to college, said he wanted to stay. He enjoyed hanging out in the dorm. Yeah. That's what he said. Right. Rob, how good was Vince Young in college? He was tremendous. Vince Young was phenomenal. Phenomenal. I mean, and you saw, obviously, like you said, he didn't have an NFL career to speak of. RG3. RG3. RG3 does what we do now. And he's young. I don't know how old he I bet you what. He's probably Is he 35? What, 32, 35, maybe. I'm, I'm just guessing. Look he, it up. He, I'm going to say 35. 35? Uh, 35, yeah. 33. Okay. Right so in the middle. I said 32. You said 35. 33 years old. Yeah. I mean, he was, and he was not only great in college, he was great his first year. His first year was offensive uh, rookie of the year, Chris. He played well. Yep. You just don't know. It's just as simple as that. 